painting clouds is easier than you think and I'm going to show you exactly how you can do it, no matter your skill level. Hello beautiful people, it's Genevieve and my goal here on this channel is to teach you all about illustration and design. Now you can totally watch only this one specific video if all you care about is how to paint clouds, but I do want to mention that it's part of a complete digital art course designed as a month-long, 100% free YouTube series. So if you want to take on the challenge of improving your art skills, make sure to check out the course details on my website and make sure to subscribe as well as ring the bell so you don't miss any of the upcoming lessons. So if you're following along to draw some clouds in the illustration that I already have, obviously you would be working in that canvas, but if you're following along the course and you're on day one so you're just drawing a cloud in the middle of nowhere, make sure your canvas is big enough so you have enough room to zoom in, but it doesn't need to be super big either because we're just practicing. So for reference, these are the dimensions that I will be using, it is literally the size of the iPad screen and that's going to be perfect for what we need today. One thing that we might want to do as well is change the background of our canvas to a neutral gray color so nothing super light or nothing super dark so that way when we're practicing we're going to be able to really see the cloud on the neutral surface so just focusing on that texture itself and not having any distraction in the background if you're working again an illustration you won't change your background to gray because that would not make sense but for practicing it's a really good thing to do in general so we're going to start with the base shape for the cloud so you can create a new layer and rename it to base shape and we're going to pick the most basic brush that you have available in your software. So in Procreate, it would be the hard brush in the airbrushing panel. We basically just want like a circle that doesn't have any texture or feathering or anything like that. Now you can see we're going to work with a super basic color palette here, just three colors. If you want to download it, it is linked in the description below. It is totally free. But as usual, I encourage you to pick your own colors because that's really good practice. So for the base of the cloud, we're just going to go with a super, super light grayish blue. We don't want to go with pure white, otherwise we won't be able to add highlights later. So just a very simple light blue gray color should do the trick. And we're going to start by drawing a very cartoon looking clouds. And for that, I personally like to draw a bunch of circles that kind of overlap a little bit. And it's really okay if you have some parts that are not fully opaque, that's going to work well in the final result. So don't, you know, don't worry about making your circles perfect. And once you have, you know, three, four, five circles, you can draw kind of a flat base to your cloud. So this is going to be the base for a cumulus kind of cloud. And later in the video, we're actually going to be talking about different kinds of cloud and how to customize them for your piece. But the technique is going to be the exact same. So we're going to look at that first on this cumulus shape. So once you have your basic super cartoonish shape, the way to make it look a little bit more realistic, it's not fully super highly realistic, it's more of a stylized uh, realistic realism, <laughs> but it's definitely not quite as cartoonish as this basic shape. So basically all you're doing is you're going in and you're adding more smaller circles everywhere. So you're just adding a little bit more detail to your shape, but it's really the same technique, just kind of refining it and adding smaller details here and there. So you can work on your shape. There's not any right or wrong way to do it. You're really just adding circles until you're happy with the shape of the cloud you're building and that's totally up to you and don't overdo it. Don't try to make it perfect. If you think of clouds in real life, you know, they're, they're not perfect. They just happen to be there. So <laughs> don't, don't worry too much about the shape of your cloud. Just add circles and once you feel like it's enough, stop and we're going to move on to the next step in which we're going to start adding the shadows which is pretty much the only other thing we have to do here but it's really going to make your cloud look so much better than just a flat white thing and with that it is time for the secret password so if you've watched this far in the video please go ahead and comment below which kind of cloud you're drawing so in my case it would be a cumulus now if you're new on the channel you might be like what's What's the deal with the secret password? Well, it's, it's kind of a game we're playing in pretty much every video and people seem to really like it. And it does a few things, honestly, on top of being fun. It gives me a lot of insight into how to edit and pace my videos better, which helps me to create better tutorials for you guys. So it's a win-win. And it's also really cool because you guys know me, you see my face in the intro, you hear my voice throughout the entire video, but I have no idea who you guys are. And when you leave a comment, I get to see sometimes your face, sometimes your name. And it's just really cool to see who's part of the creative community that we're building here on this channel. So just leave a comment with the type of cloud that you're drawing and then we're going to keep moving. So we're going to make this cloud look less like a flat little piece of paper and more like a cloud. 
Before that though, make sure that your shape, you're really happy with it. So you could also use this eraser at this point, honestly, to go in and kind of dig in the cloud. I personally think that just working with the paintbrush could totally work, but if you want to refine some pieces, don't hesitate to use the eraser at this point. So now all we have to do is build on the cloud to give it a bit more dimension, which is not really hard because right now we have nothing at all. So go ahead and create a new layer above the base shape and if it's available to you, apply it as a clipping mask. In Procreate, you would just tap on the layer and in the menu set clipping mask. If you don't have masks in your software, that's totally okay, don't worry about it. Basically all it does is this new layer that we're creating, we were going to name it to shadow by the way, everything we draw on it is going to stay within the base shape. So if you don't have clipping masks, it's okay, you're just going to have to go back and erase whatever goes out of the cloud later. So you're just going to pick a darker version of your base color at this point and you're going to make sure that your brush has a little bit of feathering on the outside. So in Procreate you could use the medium brush or the soft brush that would work really well. In other softwares just make sure that it's a brush, again, that is just a, a round basic brush, no texture to it, but the edges are feathered. If that's not available to you, don't worry, you just work with whatever brush, we're going to blend everything later in the end anyway, so it doesn't really matter that much. And at this stage all we're doing is we're kind of you know, making sure that the cloud is not super flat, so it has multiple little sections. So with that, we're going to build kind of shadows at the same time, but mostly focusing on making it look like there's different parts to the cloud. So in my case, I'm imagining that my light source is on the top left, which means most of my shadows are going to be focused on the bottom right, as you can see here. And then all you're going to do is kind of draw some squiggly shapes that go in your cloud. At this stage, it's going to look crazy, it's going to look bad, but that's totally okay. You just want to add a little bit of randomness. But one tip here to make sure it doesn't look too bad is making sure that your squiggly shapes are connected to either the sides or the bottom part of the cloud. So that way it's going to make it look like the cloud has some different sections to it. And kind of leaving the top of the cloud open because usually that's where the sun um, is hitting the cloud. So something like this. If you're drawing, you know, along my tutorial and you're just practicing, feel free to copy exactly what I'm doing. That's totally okay. Otherwise you can look at clouds outside of your window or look at reference pictures to kind of get a feel for where the shadows might be. And once you've roughly mapped out everything, it's going to look crazy. So we're going to use the smudge tool, which is usually a finger icon like this. And you can set it to a few different kinds of brushes. You can set it to a super soft brush, like the soft brush in your brushing panel in Procreate. But I personally like to set my smudge tool usually to a brush that has a little bit of texture. So in Procreate, I usually use in the painting panel the stucco brush. But in your own software, if you're not using Procreate, you could just look for a brush that has either charcoal or pencil or paint in the name and that should work. So basically we just want something that has a little bit of texture. Now here we're not going to blend everything in. You're going to leave some of the edges kind of clean and sharp because that would be the edges of where you have different parts of clouds overlapping each other. So these should be clean because they're, you know, just separate parts of the cloud. But you do want to blend some of the edges in so that those become shadows, basically. So <laughs> I know that probably the vocal explanation doesn't make a whole lot of sense. What I just said, I feel like it was just kind of confusing. But <laughs> look at the video and you're gonna understand what I mean. You're going to blend in a lot some of the edges so that they blend in and become kind of gradients, but you're gonna leave some other ones pretty much as they were um, when you draw them with the paint tool. So having this variety is going to make your cloud look much more realistic than if you were going to just either not blend at all or blend everything. You want to blend some and leave some unblended. And you can also see in the video here, in terms of the blending movement, you want to have something that is a little bit all over the place. So I'm kind of moving my circle in circle. I'm kind of moving my pencil in small circles over the piece and that is going to contribute on creating this cloud texture. So you don't want to necessarily have like linear strokes, making sure that everything you're blending in is using a curved motion, whether it's a circle or just a, you know, C curve or S curve or something like that. And don't worry about making this look perfectly smooth. The rougher it is, honestly, the better it is as well in terms of creating nice, interesting textures. So speaking of creating textures, we're going to go back in with an even darker version of our base color. So this point is pretty much a blue. And on the same layer, so I'm still in the shadow layer, going back with our 
medium hard brush so just a circle brush that has a bit of a feathering on the outside you can go and reinforce some parts of your shadows or overlapping clouds area so here you don't want to overdo it but you just got to go back and reinforce some parts of the shadows that you created in the previous step so the previous step is kind of random but in this step you're going to go back and see what looks good and work back with that so you're just going to add like i was saying a darker blue and then going back with your smudge tool to blend that in and here it's really a back and forth so don't hesitate if you're drawing something and you don't like it just undo or erase and that's totally okay we're experimenting clouds are kind of you know when you look at them in the sky they're ever-changing and we want to make sure that our piece looks like that it needs to have movement and needs to have life in it if we just make it super clean and perfect that's that's no good <laughs> so just just experiment don't overthink everything play something try it and if you don't like it just undo or erase and try something else that's that's the way you're gonna get a nice looking cloud so here I'm gonna stop talking to let you focus just keep on placing your shadows blending them until you're happy with it and then we're going to add some lights which is really going to make the piece pop so for now I'm just gonna speed up my video but keeping in the back so you can use it as a reference Great, so we're almost done, but the last few steps are really going to make a big difference. So go ahead and create a new layer, rename it to lights. I always type locked for some reason. Um, we're going to use the blending mode add and we're going to lower the opacity around 50% for now because add is a very, very strong blending mode. Now here, I'm going to go back to the base color I'll use for the cloud. You could use pure white, but I like using the base color. I think it's just, it blends in a little bit better in my opinion, it might just be me. <laughs> and if you do have clipping masks available in your software, you might want to apply this layer as a clipping mask as well so that it stays within the base shape of the cloud. Otherwise, don't worry about it. You can always go back and just erase later. So at this stage, all you're doing, as you can see, is you're adding some highlights in the parts of the clouds that are, you know, not shaded. <laughs> so you can really, really build the dimension of the texture here, add just a bit more fluff to everything to make it look so, so, so much better in just a few seconds. So of course, you will use your smudge tool here as well, so you can roughly place everything and then go back with your smudge tool. If you have a little bit of texture in it, it's going to really help make your cloud look oh so fluffy. Now the beauty of working on separate layers in digital art is that we can always go back later down the road once we've mapped out everything and play with the opacity of the different layers until we get a blending that we like. So here, for example, in my case, I found that the lights were too intense, so I'm just gonna lower the opacity, super simple. So feel free to do that. And honestly, that's the basic technique on how to paint clouds. Now I have a few more tips to give you that are super important in terms of making your clouds look good no matter the piece you're working on. So let's look at that now. So now that we've looked at the main key elements of how to draw clouds, let's talk about the things you need to keep in mind when drawing them in context, whether it's with a reference picture or not. So if you're watching this video as part of the full course, now is the time where you can pause and come back tomorrow for day two of the cloud study while you practice the same texture, but this time using a reference picture instead of just a sphere. Otherwise, make sure to keep watching because these tips can make a big difference in the final result of your artwork. When you're painting clouds, there are a few specific questions you need to ask yourself to make sure they blend well in your sky. The main one being, what is the weather like? So on top of thinking about the regular coloring and shading considerations, you can really benefit from just learning a little bit about different kinds of clouds and which weather, location, time of day, you know, those things they usually form in. So from top of mind, we tend to draw mostly clouds that resemble the cumulus, 
cumulus <laughs> and the kind of you know traditionally fluffy white cloud but honestly there are so many more types that are more appropriate often for our clouds so i'll link in the description below a super short but really great article about the different types of clouds that you can get some ideas now i would say that a good rule of thumb here is to try and combine clouds from in different parts or i guess layers of the sky because they usually have different shapes and they can really help you give your sky a sense of depth now one more thing you might want to ask yourself is what time of the day is your piece set in. <laughs> so you might get some really interesting color showing through your clouds formation around dusk and dawn, sure, um, but you might also get some really interesting reflections from the artificial light of a city at night for example. So the key here is to keep those questions in mind when creating your own piece and to look at a few reference pictures from a similar context, so similar weather, location and time of day. So you can really tweak the basic cloud painting technique to really really suit the environment of your piece. Now if you enjoyed this video and want to learn how to paint more textures and material, I highly recommend you check out this playlist because I'm going to teach you exactly that. But before you leave, make sure you give this video a like and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any of the weekly videos. Then click on the link right here and I'll see you there.